I don't know, we'll see if she makes any moves before this is over. Um, Stephanie Diaz Sheehan, who graduated from the Women's College in 2005 with a, a BBA, business degree. She came back to Brunel and completed her MBA in 2007. She is the founder and CEO of Mastermind Your Launch. She is the host of the Mastermind Your Launch podcast, for which she's interviewed over 60 entrepreneurs discussing the launches of their businesses. Stephanie works with entrepreneurs and small business owners to craft branding and content marketing strategies to accelerate their success, just as her own podcast propelled the fast success of her business. So what's unique about Mastermind Your Launch is the powerful community of like-minded entrepreneurs and influencers that Stephanie makes available to each of her clients. She is a two-time successful entrepreneur with almost a decade of executive management and business development experience in seven, eight, and nine-figure businesses. So we're talking some big money there. Um, at Renown, not only was Stephanie captain of the dance team there and a business major, she was also a proud member of Alpha Delta, the Delta Pi. And, yeah. <laughs> and she was very involved in student government. So her leadership journey began at Renown. So please welcome Stephanie Diaz Sheehan. Hello. Thank you so much, Professor Dawkins. And um, wow, I need just a second to compose myself because if a Tau Sigma dance can like make you emotional like it did for me. Um, it's been 11 years since I was sitting in your seat and that Emily and Sarah, what your, your words, Ta Sigma's dance, it just took me back to how empowering this environment is for young women and why it shaped me and my journey so much. Um, but a lot can happen after you leave for now. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that journey, um, but how even 11 years later, for now is still impacting me so much. Today I wanna to talk to you about taking the stage. And that can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. It can mean taking a stage, but for me it also just means taking the lead in your own life, being in control, having that power to stand up for what you believe and to step into the spotlight, owning what you know is right and true and just in your life, wherever that takes you. Um, I am probably the last person, especially that my mother would ever think would take the stage in such a big way. <laughs> because um, when I was young, I was a painfully shy and awkward little girl. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A little bit about my background. My family is from Puerto Rico. My mother and father moved to Georgia when I was very young. They, uh, a few years later, they divorced. And so I grew up with my mother and my brother in Douglasville, Georgia. And we did not have that village around us like so many people are blessed to have. Um, a lot of, you know, my childhood was spent taking care of my younger brother. It was spent helping my mother. And it was spent a lot of times by myself, which brought with that a lot of insecurity about fitting in. I was very scared to jump in. I was socially awkward, but there was one place where I actually found confidence and I felt like I could be a star. And that was on the stage. <laughs> I found out at a very young age that when you were on the stage, and for me, that was my dance classes, it didn't matter where your clothes came from. It didn't matter if you were hanging out with the popular kids. I knew when I stepped into that dance class and I stepped on stage, I was pretty good, and uh, I knew I could own it there, and nothing about the rest of my life mattered. Now, I never at that point would have articulated it in that way, but that's just that feeling that I had. So, as far as, you know, taking the stage, I, uh, obviously, I actually came to Brunel because of the dance program. Shout out to my dance majors. <laughs> um, but. As, as I went on, I actually ended up, as Deborah Dawkins said, uh, pursuing a business degree. I fell in love with the marketing program, and something about that really lit me up. So I graduated um, from the Women's College, went on to get my MBA, and then went out into the workforce. Over the next eight years, I worked within four different businesses. I had the good fortune to work in smaller businesses where I was able to work side by side with the 
owner and entrepreneur. Now, the annual revenues of these companies spanned from just launching to $1 million, $10 million, and even a $100 million company. So I had a front row seat to a lot of the inner workings of both small and very high revenue businesses. And I love that. I, I always felt an entrepreneurial bug in me, um, and having that front row seat definitely fed that fire. But I had no clue what my business would be. If I were to start my own business, I, I didn't know what that was. I hadn't yet connected to the impact that I wanted to create in the world. And honestly, I mean, I had a really good steady income. I didn't really have a reason, a spark to start and, and try to find that. I think that it, how I saw it is that's something for the future. That's like when I'm in my 40s, right? Um, so I'm going along my journey. And I start to lose momentum in my career. I also became a mother. And all of these life changes really started me thinking, I think now is the time to do what I really want to do. And let me find out what that is. So around the same time, I started listening to podcasts. And um, I started hearing all of these interviews with different entrepreneurs and hearing about people who had less education, less experience, less resources than me, let, you know, even younger than I am, going out and taking their stage. And I started to say, why am I waiting? What am I waiting for? So um, I started to get this idea as I'm listening to these podcasts. One, I need to do something. I need to figure this out. And two, I think, I, I think I'd be good at launching a podcast. Um, around that time, I was listening to this one podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire. Anyone familiar with that podcast? John Lee Dumas? Check it out. So Entrepreneur on Fire, daily interview with an entrepreneur. I was binge listening to these, and it started to really feed a fake flame with me. And there was one quote that he said at the end of every single episode, and it is, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Now. I knew that I had incredible people in my, in my life. Why? Because I'm a renowned woman and I'm surrounded by exceptional women. But I knew I wasn't having the right conversations. Sure, we kept up with each other, we kept in touch, we supported each other, but rarely did we say, hey, what are you dreaming about? Are you, do you feel like you're on the right path? How can I help you? What can, can I support you in that way? And this concept of masterminds started to come up again and again. If you're not familiar with what a mastermind is, a mastermind group, it is when a small group of people come together and let's say it's four people, everyone shares their idea, their dream, what they're working on, and everyone else pours into their idea by saying yes, and here's how I can help you, or did you check out this resource, or let me connect you with so-and-so. So basically, one person's idea gets supported by an entire group. I said, I need a mastermind. I called upon my Brunel women to mastermind with me. I shared with them this silly idea of launching a podcast. I'm like, y'all are gonna think I'm crazy, but I kind of think that I could do this and it could be something really special. Will you hold me accountable to not let this idea just you know, go by the wayside? So we met every other week on a Google Hangout, and let me tell you that we were busy women. All of us young mothers, or mothers of young children, two of them were pregnant in their third trimester. Like, I had no business asking, for that, asking them for any of their time, um, but they did give it to me graciously. And what's beautiful is that not only did I launch my own idea, but they've also reinvented their careers as well. Because as we got together, the energy was infectious. They couldn't meet with me and not start thinking about their own careers. And when they started bringing up ideas, we all poured into them. It was beautiful what happened. So we're meeting, we're on our Google Hangouts, I'm talking to them about this podcast, and I start to build up some courage. I start to take my ideas seriously because Really and truly, there were a lot of voices in my head saying, really, Stephanie, a podcast? You think you can reinvent your career with an online radio show? Um, you think that anyone's gonna listen? Do you think that people are gonna take you seriously? This is ridiculous. And the more you put it out there, the, the farther people are gonna see you fall. And failing publicly is not something that I was really wanting to do at that point, but I knew I had to get out 
there, and I had to at least try. So after a while, masterminding, I get the courage, and I take that first small step, because every big journey starts with a small step. For me, it was getting on Amazon and ordering a $50 microphone. <laughs> that was step number one. And however small that seems to you, this picture means so much to me, unboxing it and taking a selfie, because this was, it marked the beginning of a journey, but it also marked the end of the question period. Am I going to do this? Am I, am I actually gonna take that step? This was the point that I got to end that and say, yes, I am. And so what happened from there? I started to gain a little bit of confidence as I started to take action. Now notice the confidence wasn't in the beginning. There's a quote that I love that says, See how much you can do by watching yourself do it. And what I love about that quote is it honors the fact that I don't know what I can do right now. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I have to take those steps to discover it. So whatever it is that you're thinking, I'd love to do that, but can I? That's not the question. All you have to say is, I'm going to see. Let me see how much I can do. Let me start taking action. And let me figure it out along the way. You are smart women, trust me. You have more at your fingertips than you realize. You have more in, in the women right around you than most people do. And you can figure it out, and you don't have to put it all on yourself. You've got your sisters to help you figure it out too. So what happened to that little podcast that I watched? I'm gonna tell you what happened, and this is over the last 18 months. That is less than a cell phone contract. <laughs> this is what has occurred since that launch, thanks to my renowned sisters and our masterminds. First of all, I um, started getting amazing guests to be interviewed on the show. Launched with an interview with Brian Scott, 10 years in the NFL, he's an entrepreneur and philanthropist. I got to sit down with him the week his episode went live on Shark Tank, where he pitched to the Sharks and got a deal with Mark Cuban and David Zahn. Sat down with Nick Unsworth of Life on Fire, huge entrepreneurial community in San Diego. He's like Tony Robbins meets business for young entrepreneurs. He hosts these amazing three-day events. I've been to them twice. When he hosts these three-day events, he banks nearly $800,000 in a weekend. Got to sit down and talk to him about how he does that. Susanna Specia. A local nonprofit founder, killing it. She's a TEDx speaker. Within one year of launching her nonprofit, she had partnerships with companies like Google, the Grammys, MailChimp. She's huge here in Atlanta and is expanding nationwide. Within three months, I got to meet the Entrepreneur on Fire team. That's me with John Lee Dumas, and I actually got to have his business partner, Kate Erickson, on the show to talk about how they launched one of the biggest business podcasts on iTunes right now and how they've been able to monetize that podcast to over $500,000 a month in revenue. Amazing. I've been featured on radio shows, podcasts, and speaking engagements from Atlanta all the way to the UK. So I can actually say that Mastermind Your Launch is international now. And um, as far as the reinventing my career, my business, today I work with companies that are spanning from startups to serial entrepreneurs and even venture capitalists, helping them to create go-to-market strategies and to position themselves for accelerated success. But what's most special to me is the fact that I took the stage in my own life. That's honestly the biggest a blessing to me is just to look back and see what I did, especially from the moment that I, I thought that I couldn't do it. And so as I leave you today, I want to leave you with three things. One, you can do anything you set your mind to. You can. Two, two you are going to shock yourself with where you will go because your mind cannot imagine where, from where you're sitting right now just how far that path will take you. As you take one step, the next step will be revealed and revealed and revealed. You cannot even imagine the places that you will go because I could never have imagined 
the doors that are opening for me, but it's that first step and the continuation of the path. So just go. And three, mastermind with your Brunel women. It has been everything in my journey, and I know that it will be everything in your journey. I thank you so much for having me. story that resonates most with me is the fact that her Brunel circle went with her for the rest of her life to date and will as long as she lives. She will be connected with those Brunel women always. They have served to help her in her business. They have supported her in her personal life and in her own growth for uh, knowledge and stretching herself and challenging herself and being willing to risk failure. That is a very difficult thing to do, but only by being vulnerable to that can we sometimes rise to the challenge, you know. Um, so we're very grateful to Stephanie for coming today, and I hope that you will heed her words and hang on to your Brunel circle, too. Hang on to those, sister, those sisters you have and foster those relationships always. I want to make a quick switch.